<sighs> nope. Yep. Good morning, YouTubers. <clears throat> you might recognize this car. Only, you know, it, uh, it's had a little incident, shall we say. Or we should call it, oh dear, yeah. A big old buck jumped in front of me when I was driving it. And, uh, I was only doing 25, 30 mile an hour at the most, stopped almost immediately, but that bugger literally rolled up onto the hood. The hood was buckled to about here, and I did a little stomping on it. I probably should have filmed that. But, nonetheless, we're not fixing this today, because uh, my daughter's still in that bumping into things stage with learning how to drive. So we're going to wait, uh, and I keep finding the stuff cheap. The only problem is they want a million dollars to ship it. I found the hood, I think it was the hood, it was like $100, $350 shipping. Yeah, ain't doing that. So I'll wait till I find one locally and we'll, we'll go on painting on it and getting it. I think I can fix the grill, but we'll need to replace this chrome piece and, you know, the header panel and the hood. That's not what today's video is about. Today's video, for some reason, and it was working fine after I hit the deer, for some reason this headlight is only running at about half its brightness. It's on, everything's working, but it's it's dim. It's like not not shining the way it's supposed to shine. So we're gonna take this out, take a look at it, which is a little more difficult now that the deer did the custom body work here. Uh, <clears throat> everything's a little closer, and getting the air box out is not as easy as it was the last time we fixed the front end on this car. I may have to do a little bit of uh, truck versus Cadillac pulling with a chain kind of thing to, to fix things the way they're supposed to be fixed but she runs and drives and, and that's really what matters and she runs good she's a good running vehicle I've got no complaints I wouldn't hesitate to buy another Cadillac to be honest with you this I didn't pay a whole I paid you know very little money for this and if you watch the how much of my cars worth video you'll see just how much I paid but it wasn't a lot I promise you that and it's been a great car so far no complaints and now I gotta try to figure out these are aftermarket headlights I'm almost positive I'm not 100% sure, but I think they are just because they're a little different than I've watched some other YouTube how-tos on taking the headlight out, and it ain't the same. So I don't know what the difference is. Uh, if Maybe these are aftermarket. That's my assumption, but I don't really know. Nonetheless, they're not cheap. This is something that isn't cheap uh, if I have to replace it and if I, if I can even find one like this. Uh, so it may come down to having to replace two, which would, oof, yowza. Anyway. We're going to go ahead and uh, pull this out, take a look at it. I'm guessing maybe it's a bad ground, but we won't know till we pull it, put it out. Pull it, pull it. Try that in English. Woo! Pull it out and look at it and check for the grounds and all that good happy horse pecking. So, that's what we're doing. Hang with me. Well, let's get started. You might ask why. <clears throat> working outside when I go to shop right there. The reason is it's a beautiful day. It's about 50 degrees out and uh, sunny and warm-ish and it's just too nice a day to be cooped up in a shop. So I'm going to go ahead and you know do this job outside. 
gets windy and it starts messing up my audio, well, then we'll have to put her inside. But for the moment, this is what we're doing. For some of you detective types, you may or may not have noticed that I turned the car around. And the reason for that is <clears throat> YouTube, lighting. Uh, see this real good? Don't necessarily have to see this because we're not going to be doing anything over here as much as we are right here. <sighs> so, I turned the car around just for lighting purposes. That takes the sun off my back, but eh, it is what it is. You know, it's more important to, for you guys and girls, you folks, to see what's going on. And, uh, so there we go. Okay, anyhow. This is the box that's got to come out. And the thing about this box is after all these accidents that it's had, everything's broken. So the only place, and this is where your air cleaner goes, air filter. So the only place I really have to disconnect is over here where the, uh, where this goes. And if I remember right, yep, there's a little doodah right there. Pull this out. It's got a little clippy that you gotta press in or pull out. I can't remember which. Uh, I think it's press in. And then you just pull this straight out. But you can see everything's loose because it's all busted up. The fortunate thing is it doesn't really matter because it's not going anywhere. I promise you that. Let's put this back on so we don't actually drop something in the, in the engine. Okay, this is gonna be stubborn. I think if I remember, eh, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a, just a little quick, just stiff. But you hate these little things that are supposed to just pop right off and they don't. Uh, might require, well, it's got a little tabby dude down here. Might require some extra oomphage on a part of a pair of pliers. There we go. I just wasn't enough mustard in the old fingertips, I guess. Take that off. I'm going to get a screwdriver. <clears throat> I'm going to pull this uh, hose clamp, big monstrous hose clamp. Pull that out, and hopefully we'll be able to get this air box out of it. But like I said, everything's kind of pushed this way just a tad. You can see a little buckle right here. So and I think maybe slightly downward. No, she almost looks upward by that. But anyway, it makes this air box extremely tight in here. So getting it out may, or and it pushed the radiator back a tad. It may or may not be easy or possible to get this out. We may have to get the truck and hook in here and with a chain and just kind of give her a little yank to try to give us a little more space because it was pretty tight in there before. So let's see what happens. Too bad, folks. I was a little worried, but she come right out. Yay! So that's not too bad. Guess it didn't. Well, you know, pieces didn't make this too small to get that out. And uh, now we can get to the headlight. Not know if I can get you all in here or not. And I don't know if I want to pull this headlight completely out since I can access everything from right in here I'll try I don't know I don't think I can get you all in here but I'll try just so you can see what I'm working on <clears throat> this is the back of the headlight right here decided not to take it out because it's a big job and you can look at the changing the headlight on video on this car and you'll see how much work it is to pull this headlight out so <clears throat> I went ahead and I'm just gonna work on it from back here I did find a problem uh, in here when I wiggle these wires there uh, it's making the headlight change 
So I'm guessing the problem's in this harness, so I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to take a look and see if those connectors don't need to be cleaned up. I'm going to try putting some parts cleaner. <clears throat> this is for electric parts. Electromotive. This is to clean electric parts. I'm going to spray inside on the plug. Try to clean those contacts up. It's always fun to in tight places to clean stuff. And we're going to tip it upside down so there's no liquid. All right. <clears throat> so we'll get some air to try to blow out any liquid that's left in there. This should dry out pretty quick. It, it, drying off my hands here by the time I get the air hose. We're going to try. We're going to get some dielectric grease, <clears throat> smear it on the back and see if that will improve our connections. Yep, dielectric grease. I love this stuff. <clears throat> it protects so much and keeps things from sticking like your spark plugging wires and that sort of thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a, a little row of it inside these connectors. And then maybe put a little on my fingertip and put it on the ones in here. Probably not necessary. There's only like four. <clears throat> so you can't, probably can't see it from there, but there's like a million little holes in the connector, which is right here. Let me see if I can get a little better view of all of that. All right, this is the connector I'm talking to you about. <clears throat> I spread a bunch of grease up in here. And I'm just going to try plugging it back in. The problem seemed to have been when I was playing with these three wires right here. There's a yellow, there's a black, and there's a purple. The green, I'm guessing, would be the ground wire. So I'm just going to plug it back in with all my little modifications. And... Uh, See if it makes any change. Nope, still dim. <sighs> so, do we poke and prod? We'll get a test light, I guess, and then we'll see if it's got a reset here. It's not getting full power, and so why I'm not getting full power is the question. <laughs> <clears throat> is it in the light itself or is it in the wiring on the car that's the question I may end up having to take myself out of my comfort zone and pull this in the shop <clears throat> because the Sun is making it hard to see in the darker places but uh, hmm I'm going to go get a test light and we'll test on these wires and see if I'm not getting enough current. I tested I tested these with my regular light and the two hot ones are indeed <clears throat> hot. Oops, wrong ones. No, yeah, that's them. Well, they were hot. There we go. That one's hot. This one's a little stubborn, but they're hot. <clears throat> okay, so the next step is to take my multimeter. And I put my multimeter in here. <clears throat> You're probably not going to be able to read that because of the lighting. I know I'm the world's worst cameraman. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm sorry. I'm still getting over this crud. And then I'm putting this one in the, the ground, the black in the ground. And then I'm going to go over here and put this in here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Golly. Apologize. You all haven't listened to that. Then go here. And come on. There we go. 
Well, it went there for a minute. There we go. Uh, and it's got 12 volts. So, well, 11.39, which if I sell, held it there long enough, probably would have gone 12. So I've got 12 volts going to the bulb. That's not good. Well, it's good because that means the wiring in the car is fine. It's bad because that means something inside this light is foobar. That means I'm going to have to search <coughs> for new lights. I could try changing the bulb. I don't think that's going to help. Um, might be worth a shot to do it. But the halo, everything, everything in there is dim. A lot of it's not working. And so, and it's all smashed on the inside, you know. So I'm thinking maybe air is getting to it or moisture and that's making things just not do what things are supposed to be doing. So, unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. And this is a failure. And it did go bright for a minute when I did that. It really did. I just saw it go bright just for a second. Yep, right there. Let's see. Hey. Now that's working. So we're still dealing with a bad connection, only the headlight itself is out, but the halo went on. So we're still dealing with a bad connection here. If I could get that to stay like that, not really sure. So it's in the plug. <laughs> well, that's good news. Good news, bad news, indifferent news. How to fix it is going to be the question. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna. What I'm going to do is I am going to get in here and I'm going to bend these prongs just a tad. Maybe I'll get. Maybe I'll get in there with some wire brush or something. Try to clean it up first. Yeah, let's do that. sure <clears throat> how I can clean these up I can't really let me just go shut the headlights off so there's no power coming to it <clears throat> if you can see right in here I don't know if you can I don't know this is zip tied and when I found out when I pulled up on the wires <clears throat> the light would come on and be strong it's weird because I had 12 volts and it would go away then I have 12 volts and it would go away so <clears throat> I pulled up on the wiring and the connect it made a good connection again. So I'm guessing something way down in there, which will require getting it on a lift and uh, testing all the plugs down in there to see if there's a bad connection down in there somewhere in one of those plugs. Because they're down there, they are probably getting damp when the car hits water or whatever. And so I'm going to have to get in there <clears throat> another day and, uh, and fix all that. I apologize for being so froggy, folks. Uh, but for now, pulling it up, and I put a zip tie on that light, so uh, on that wiring, so it'll hold it in the position where she's getting a good connection. And hopefully that'll get her by for the, a little bit of time here until I can get around to uh, getting underneath this thing and that sort of stuff. So sometimes it just takes a little redneck engineering, you know what I'm saying? This is not really a good video for uh, 
you know, how to fix things right, obviously, because I did not find the problem. Uh, I remedied the problem. My wife's like, did you fix it? I'm like, well, it's working. <laughs> Getting it working is half the battle. I actually had the same problem on my truck. The headlight went out. And the same thing. When I moved the plug a certain way, everything would come on the way it's supposed to. And uh, I, it's a similar fix. I ended up putting a shim in the connector to keep it. And it's been it's been like that for two years now and working fine. So uh, don't be afraid to redneck engineer if you need to. Uh, it's not the right way, but if it works, is it the wrong way? I don't know. Now to wrestle with the airbox <clears throat> again. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So I think if I put it back in the same way, we might be okay. The hard part is getting it to... just don't know what to say it went something's wrong something's got to be wrong it just went right in yeah can't be. but I'm seeing it with my own papers it, it it's it's just it's in already never never in my life has such a thing happened it's 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 on there. I, I this is a phenomenon, folks. That ne I, I just can't believe. I just can't believe. It just fell right in. Everything's where it needs to be. And if I can find the screwdriver, we're just gonna tighten up on the old hose clamp and call it good. Wow. This is a momentous event. Something's wrong. Probably, you know, the car won't start now or something. It's, it's, this does not happen. Things don't just work out. But there is a God. And it's doubtful I made him super happy today in any way, but you never know. <laughs> you know? Oh, let's see. Oh, we gotta tighten that. Uh oh, well, gotta get that back up in there. Zip ties are like the best invention ever. You know what I mean? I think zip ties are holding this car together. <laughs> I really believe that's the case. I'm trying to get that one to go, but that's keeping that from doing anything funky. Making sure I didn't create any problems wow let's see if this thing will start start <clears throat> I've had the headlights going for quite some time so that's I'm sure that's what it is so let me put a battery charger on it yeah I knew something had to go wrong Not to mention, I don't have anything else to do, you know, while I'm waiting for it to charge. If you look, my battery charger, of course, with the camera, it flashes, I don't know why, it says on. When it's ready to start, <clears throat> this little LED here will say ready, or something along those lines. And I'll show you that once that happens, but i got to leave it on bake right now until, or broil, or whatever you want to call it, until, uh until that changes and I'll show you that but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch the whole time so we'll go fast skippy time-lapse kind of stuff time-lapse says ready see RD 
RDY, ready. Now we can start the car. Can't forget to put the decorative cover on. Turn on the headlights. See if they still work. <sighs> nope. Yep. <laughs> well. Uh. So are we? Did we succeed or didn't we? Seems like the more you jostle it, the better. <laughs> Try it one more time. Off. On. Woo! Well, time will tell if we have success or not. But for now, it's success. Maybe all that jostling around with the air box and everything, you know, hit that wire. But now it's working, and I could probably teach my daughter how to whack it if I need to. <laughs> we'll get under it eventually and try to fix it right, find exactly where that just where that bad connection is, and get that fixed the right way. But the good news is it's not the headlight. Uh, and actually, and, and I know I question this. So let's go, I'm going to move the car and then I'll explain this. I know earlier, and actually and I think some other videos, I've mentioned that I wasn't sure if these were aftermarket lights. Because everything on the internet said I'm supposed to be using some, I forget now, you have to watch that video changing the headlight, uh, some other type of light. And I ordered the correct one for the car and it was wrong. When I took the old this one out, it was HID style light. So I said, must be aftermarket. And there's not supposed to be those access holes in the back according to everybody else. I went into the fuse panel today. I don't know if I showed you all that. I don't think I did. Went into the fuse panel just to check the fuses. They were fine. But where the relays are, <clears throat> the relays said right on them, or right next to them, on the, you know, on the car's uh, socket where the relay goes. I don't know what to call it. The box, the control box, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> that actually said HID headlights. So, <clears throat> evidently, this car came with HID headlights. Why the auto parts stores, why all the YouTube videos I watched, why all the other everybody experts said otherwise, I don't know. But I started thinking these must be aftermarket. But according to the fuse panel, yeah, that's it, fuse panel. I figured it out. According to the fuse panel, they're supposed to be HIDs, which is what they are. So, I don't know. You tell me. Is everybody else wrong? That can't be right, right? I can't be the only guy in the world that knows how to fix a Cadillac that I don't know anything about. Um, so, I don't know. You figure it out. You guys tell me. Maybe some of you Cadillac experts out there. Let me know. <clears throat> Do these cars come with HID lights? Because it says it on the fuse panel. Uh, and if they did, did they come with the halo style uh, HID lights? Your guess is good as mine, but it's working. <clears throat> maybe not, you know, maybe not exactly right, but it works. And uh, it seems like the more it jostles around, the better it likes it. 
Uh, if <clears throat> I will eventually get it up on a lift and we'll get up underneath there and try to find the actual connection that's weak. We'll clean it up. <clears throat> Man. <clears throat> Sorry, I am froggy as can be. Uh, this goes to show how dedicated I am to you all. <laughs> I still have to go out in the yard and pull a couple of parts for some customers. But in the meantime, at least my daughter will be safe. And she'll have her headlights both working, so then we'll think she's a motorcycle and smash into it. Uh, and that's going to be the end of this video. If you liked this video, even though I know it's redneck engineering, but if you enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't already, why not? <laughs> please do so. It also wouldn't hurt if you hit the like button. That makes me feel a warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, and share it with your friends, because that's how my channel can grow. And if I grow, you grow, because it gives you something else to watch, right? Thank you for watching. See you.